Welcome to this Optics Rate Debates. In today's debate, uh, Andras and myself, Theodor, we will talk a little bit about the differences and similarities between the outgoing quantum light, Pulsar quantum light, uh, XQ30V, and the completely new, new model for 2019, the Axion Key XM30. Both of these two are currently, well, this was until now the entry level of Pulsar uh, thermal monoculars, and now this is the entry level of Pulsar monoculars. So Andrash, if we start, uh, we know we can see the differences already, how they look and how much smaller the key is. But let's talk about the sensor. Let's say what are the differences between the sensor in the in the quantum light and what are the what is the sensor in the Axion key? Yeah, the sensor the sensors work on a different resolution. Mm -hmm. With the Axion key, it's a 320 by 240. Yeah. With the quantum light, it is 388 by 288. But the difference is also in the pixel pitch. So uh, these use a 12 micron pixel pitch, mm -hmm. while with the quantum light, it was 17 micron. So basically much smaller pixel, yeah, so be. it should give you a little bit more details compared to the It should give you a little quantums. more details, not to mention that there is also a better display resolution on the key. So mm -hmm. we have the 960 by uh, 620, I think. 720. 720, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, it. that's right. And with the quantum light, we have 640 by 480. So That's true in the numbers, but it's also true for me, I'm wearing glasses. When I use both of them with the glasses, I still get a... I would say a bigger impression of the image and a little bit uh, uh, easier way to use it with the, with the quantum lights. Uh, As you said, the impression is that on the quantum light the display is a little bit bigger. Even though it's not in reality, it's only yeah, an impression. That's right. right? But uh, on the, the key you can see that you get a little bit more details yeah. from observing. Yeah, I would say that this is probably due to smaller pixel size on the sensor and also bigger resolution on the display. That's right. When we talk about the form factors, uh, we can see that the quantum lights, I would say they are almost a legacy devices already because there were three generations, I think three generations of quantums. So they changed the sensor in the meantime, they changed different uh, um, diameters of the lenses and so on. So basically this was the last one. Yes. So this was the last quantum which came out of the factory after so many different models uh, and I would say it was quite a famous device. A lot of people, I would say the name itself, Quantum, is a synonym for what you're getting. And with Quantum Light, it was the most affordable one. This device uh, costed 1,500 euros. And we know that uh, previously the best Quantum devices, the Quantum uh, XQ50, costed 3,690 euros, so 3,700 euros. So it was really an interesting ride through the life cycle of this device. Uh, now normally the Axion is a completely new device, completely different uh, in design, in materials and, and so you, on. I think if we, if we take a look at the form, I would say that this one is more industrial, whereas here they've paid attention to, to the outer appearance as well. Yeah, it's now, yeah. I would say, more sexy. Yeah, it's, it's really it's sexier, beautiful. Yeah. And also the materials, this was made out of polymer this and is. rubber, and that one is made out of magnesium. That's right. That's and correct. rubber. So I do like that both of them had a LED diode outside so that you're able to see when they're turned on. Uh, quantum lights had a quite, I would say, fast startup time, about three seconds, something like that. With the Axions, it's even faster. Uh, it's called like lightning startup so or something there, like that. There is some, some kind of an improvement on the software. Yeah, yeah, naturally, right? Even though the the calibration modes are still the same, so on both of these two devices, the calibration modes are uh, automatic, semi-automatic, and manual. Uh, usually, the automatic is the easiest one to use. Uh, the menus are a little bit different. So the Axions have a menus which are almost, or they at least resemble to the Helion series of uh, thermal monoculars, while the Quantums have their own quantum menus. Uh, even though the basic principle is quite simple, you have the, I would say, the first menu with a short press of a button and then uh, the main menu with a long press of a button. Um, they also both use, I think, the same types of lenses, calcogenide yeah. lenses, yeah. right? So not uh, the germanium type? Not like the, the germanium type, like the standard Axion that is not the key. Yeah, uh, what about the battery? This is the battery pack that you, 
that you basically got with the quantum light, right? No, I didn't. You need to purchase it separately. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. What is, in essence, the quantum light was designed for use with the normal AA batteries. So you get it with a, yeah, this with a magazine for four batteries. And then later they introduced the DNV battery pack. And this was a huge, I would say, leap forward. And now this is just the evolution of everything. Because changing of this uh, DNV, it's, it's easy, but still not as, uh, as easy and not as nicely done as on the so Axion. So this is the APS-3. Yeah. And this is what uh, basically powers the Axion, right? Yeah, both of them have similar uh, battery life. However, it is much easier to replace the battery uh, on an Axion. It's just one button and you just you push the battery in. Now it works. And then you push the button in the front so that it jumps out. Really it's simple. really fast, it's really simple. And I believe that uh, many uh, people will buy this device mostly because of the solution of the battery. Because we have to know that the uh, the battery and the battery life is still the main disadvantage of all thermal monoculars. And I think that with every Pulsar monocular that they release, they have better ergonomics. So yeah. do pay attention to the ergonomics. This, the, the battery removal is now really simple. Even though I have to say that with quantum light, this rotating yeah, button, it, wasn't bad, yeah. it was really, really good. I think on Clever Helion's right and there, yeah. Axions, there are people who prefer this rotating button. For, uh, for It's simple because it's a rotating knob, but yeah. you can also press it, right? Yeah. So this was, ergonomically speaking, it was not bad. Normally this is more advanced. It, it is nicer to use, even though the rotating button on the, on the Quantums was, a, I would say, a smart choice. Uh, Price-wise, you know the prices of the, both of them are roughly similar, right? Eh? Yeah, so um, when... A little before it was discontinued, I think that the quantum light was priced at 1,500 euros, at yeah. least for the 30 millimeter objective yeah. model. Yeah, right? because they, the they discontinued the, the 23 millimeter model uh, before, before the last year. So in 2017, they did discontinue the 23 model. So only 30 was left. And now this one is also 30, the same lens diameter, the same material lens. It costs uh, 1,390. So, yeah, so 110 euros less. That's really interesting. You get a better device for a little bit less of money. Even though if you wear glasses, the Quantum still has a little bit of an edge, I would say. So, uh, yeah, the, probably the contact surface here is a yeah. little bit bigger, making it more comfortable. You have to use it without the glasses to get the full potential out of it. But uh, with the glasses, it's a little bit less pleasant than the, the Quantums. Uh, the warranty, three years, right? Three years on both devices, yeah. Three years. The waterproofness. IPX7, IPX4, so, so much, yeah, much better for use in, in uh, adverse conditions, especially regarding water. It is, however, true that the, the display, you said that this one has the LCOS display, this one has the AMOLED display. That means that you can use the quantum light all the way up to minus 25 degrees Celsius. So, so it's, it's really, really cold. Yeah. This one down to minus 10. If you go below that, yeah, the, the if you go below that, then you probably should get the non-key version, yeah. right? because it also has the AMOLED display. Then you get the standard version, even though, let's be honest, majority of people will never use neither of these two devices at temperatures lower than minus 10. Even minus 10 is almost extreme. Um, hmm. What else? What did we forgot? Um, ergonomically, ergonomically better. we already said that this one is... Optically also, it gives better detail. It I'd gives say, better detail. detail. Even though it has an impression that the, 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 the display is smaller, mm. you get better details at the end. Uh, the magnification is the same in both of them. 2.5 is the starting magnification and then you can move up to 10 digitally. You can, Im you can zoom in the image for four times and this is the same in both of them. I would also say that the field of view is quite similar. It is. Um, so, I, I think we covered most of the things. I, I hope we didn't forget something. So, uh, the quantum light, now that the Axion is out, they're, yeah, they're out discontinuing the market, it. They're discontinuing it yeah. and, uh, it's over. Both of them lack the stream vision capabilities. So, for the stream vision capabilities, when quantum light was out, you had to buy a Helion. With Axions, you have to buy the Axion XM30 without the key. 
acronym. So the ones are also recognized with the blue button, right? Yeah. They have a blue button and you know that this features stream vision. Yeah, when it's blue yeah. on, on, on it, you, you see that it's, uh, it has a Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, yeah. connectivity. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. I hope we covered most of the differences. Uh, still, like with Quantum Light, also with Axion, the user gets a really powerful package for this price point. Uh, and if you forgot anything, use comments below, send us questions, send us an email, and we will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, also, if you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.